Hello, Lambert Park Church. It's that time of year when the days are long, the sun is warm, school's wrapping up, and we get to meet for a special general meeting to discuss the church budget for our next fiscal year. Your willingness to carve out some time to read through this document or watch this video is appreciated. Thank you for your commitment to the life and ministry of Lambert Park Church. You might know that our fiscal year runs from September through August, uh, which means that this time of year, the staff team, that's church staff and the YWA staff, the finance team, ministry leaders, the board of elders, we all work together to develop what we believe is a fiscally responsible uh, budget for the upcoming fiscal year. It's very much a collective effort of stewarding the resources that have been entrusted to us. Thank you to the many people involved in the budget development process and thank you for your financial support to enable LPC to continue to serve God in so many amazing ways. Our current fiscal year, which goes through August, took place completely in a COVID-19 pandemic world. The elders are very encouraged by the ongoing sacrificial giving on your part and the wise use of resources and staff throughout the year. As many things continue to evolve, and they, they still do today. However, we believe that collectively the budget that Russ Jones and Scott Anderson are going to unpack for you in this video helps support our efforts moving forward. As we become somewhat accustomed to, this special general meeting will take place over Zoom. So please be sure to register for the meeting, which will take place on Monday, June 28 at 7 p.m. To assist in the meeting, we produce this video to help bring you up to speed on how we've approached this budget and the key factors involved. I hope you find it helpful. We have also attached the budget summary and a script to this video for those who find that helpful. If you have any questions, please contact the church office so we can be sure to have the answers for you on the 28th. So thank you again for your time and commitment to what God is doing through Lambert Park Church. Well, before we look forward to our next fiscal year, first, I want to say on behalf of our whole leadership team, a huge thank you. Um, I think it's important that we pause and just acknowledge where we are, where we've been. What a year, what a year none of us saw coming and never would have chosen, right? It has been 15 months since we have all worshipped together in the same room and we feel it. And we're longing for that day to be over. I know I am. And yet through the many challenges and losses of this season of COVID, we have been incredibly thankful for the consistency and faithful faithfulness of so many of our church, of you. Over the last season, um, let me just name a few things. Uh, uh, many have selflessly volunteered countless hours on Zoom, pouring into our teens. I just want to say a huge thanks to all of our youth leaders uh, who have served, stepped up uh, through this last season and cheered on our middle school and high school teens. Hugely thankful for you. Others have quietly showed up at uh, here at, at Lambrick, uh, 17 30, uh, 1780 Feltham Street, and uh, weeded the gardens and tended to our property. Every week, huddles of women and men, some long-time Bible study groups, some newly formed groups of women or men on Zoom, or just two or three people sitting together on a, on a porch, opening scripture together, listening to God together, discussing God's revelation and work and will, praying for one another, and spurring one another on in Christ. Over the last season, a few have given heaps of hours cleaning out a storage area in the lower part of our building, preparing it to house ministry in the next chapter. The board has met every month or at times more often to support me and help direct, protect, and oversee the life and leadership of Lambrick. Our finance team have been hard at work month after month, watching the trends, discerning priorities. Our missional engagement team has pressed on, helping us stay connected to our missionaries, supporting them, praying for them, and conspiring missional opportunities wherever possible. And our family care team has continued to keep their eyes on the hurting and the margins reaching out themselves or catalyzing others to reach out in the name of Jesus, delivering care packages to families when needed, calling on those who are isolated, praying for those in hard places. Through it all, and there's so much more that could be said, Despite many barriers, Lambrick has continued to be a living community, a living church, a community seeking and following Jesus for the sake of our neighbors. This is 
how God has always been at work and evident among us. And I'm so thankful that has happened in the midst of this season. In the midst of all that we haven't been able to do, God has continued to be evidently at work. And this consistency and faithfulness has been evident in our financial giving too. Despite this long and uncertain pandemic season, our financial giving has remained surprisingly consistent. And this has been an incredible gift, which has helped us support our missionaries and local missional partners, maintain our building, retain our staff, but through all of that, continue God's ministry and mission this year in so many ways and work toward the days when we will be together in person again all the more so. So before anything else, let me simply say on behalf of all of us, thank you. Thank you for the ways that you give generously of yourselves. You pour into the life of others in the life of Lambrick and our Lambrick, the hands and feet of Jesus in our world. So thank you. All right. Hi, for those who don't know me, I'm Russ Jones. I joined the Board of Elders as treasurer earlier this year, and I'm also chair of the Finance Committee. Uh, the Finance Committee normally meets uh, monthly and consists of Terry Jarvey, Chris Raper, and Tom Aspen, and we're joined at those meetings by staff from the, from the church, Administrative Director Therese Alton, Wise Ways Director Lisa Thompson, and our bookkeeper Ruth Barassa. So before I get into talking about uh, this year's budget, I just wanted to say and recap a little bit about what happened over the the past few months. And overall, Lambrick's revenue, which is made up of income from giving, rentals, government grants, and wise ways, um, is is fairly fairly, uh, steady this year. Um, additionally, as you know, for a portion of this year, Wiseways and Lambrick were eligible for government funding that supplemented our revenue and as such for uh, items such as employee wage subsidies and emergency grants for the operation of Wiseways. Uh, at our last year's um, uh, budget, we anticipated uncertainty in, in, the, in the budget for the current year or th- that we're in, and we proposed what we called a rainy day budget. And this included a relatively small deficit of $8,000, and our budget was cut back and very frugal in every possible area. We, the board, finance team, and admin director, uh, committed to wise financial stewardship throughout this year with priority given to resourcing our ministries, supporting our staff and missionaries and missional partners, and working to support Wise Ways and their staff through the challenging season. And we've done these things. So bottom line is, giving has been consistent. Uh, Wise Ways remained open and almost fully booked. Uh, Recurring rentals were secured and government funding was received. So we are pleased to report that year to date, our revenue is ahead of what was projected. And in addition, we continue to be frugal and our expenses remain below budget. This is good news, and we have so much to be thankful for and so much to look forward to in the coming uh, fiscal, the rest of this fiscal year and in the the new fiscal year. Gratefulness and hopefulness shaped our planning and budget development for this coming fiscal year. The priorities of this budget support our goal to once again experience life together in person and to be able to welcome others into that personal and transforming life with God. The, the, those priorities that we have established for the coming year are providing extra resources to our care team, ministries, and leaders, and staff as we transition back into in-person activities. Many children and youth have been particularly impacted through this season, and we are so thankful for the wise leadership of our children's pastor, Kenzie, and that our, and that our new youth pastor, Aaron, will be arriving in August. Secondly, continuing to support our missionaries and local partners, many of whom have been hit hard by this pandemic financially and in other ways. And finally, planning and caring for our facility, as it is Lambrick's physical presence in in this neighborhood and the practical facilitator of so much of our ministry. So before we look at the individual budget lines for the current year, I will take you through some of the financial finance committee thinking in the preparation of the budget for 2021-22. 
Right off the top, let me assure you that amidst all the unknowns and uncertainty, we've done our best to pay attention to the trends we are seeing and build our budget accordingly. Clearly, things could change, and if so, we will revisit our budget plans, and that is a commitment to all of you. So in building this budget, we have made some assumptions as a starting point for our decisions and priorities, and I will share these with you. First, we're projecting that our giving revenue will increase by 6% this coming fiscal year. This is based on the consistent faithful giving of our congregation, not only this past year, but over the past five years. So we've looked at trends. Secondly, we're working with an assumption that government restrictions for gathering will continue to ease, allowing in-person gathering and no further restrictions for the operation of Wiseways. Thirdly, this budget anticipates that Wiseways will be running four fully booked classrooms, operating for 12 months of the year and with its usual level of government funding. This model means they'll be self-sufficient, contributing to our operating expenses of the, to the organization and supporting their own projects and or specialized facility upgrades that may need, may need to be done. In other words, exactly the way they've been working this whole past year. And lastly, this is the church's operating budget and does not include any capital projects. We will talk more about capital projects a bit later. So let's talk about the budget we are proposing. You can follow along on the budget summary sheet that's available on our website, and we'll have some info on the screen as we look at the major budget items. Overall, this combined budget of Lambrick and Wiseways ends up with a modest net surplus of approximately $15,000. For clarity, we account for the Lambrick and Wiseway, Wiseways budget separately. However, we consolidate the results for financial reporting purposes as we are one legal entity. First of all, let's look at Lambrick's budget, starting with the revenue line items. You'll notice in the slide provided that we anticipate our overall revenue for this year to increase by 6%. We've chosen this approach because giving has increased over each of the last five years and has been very consistent this year, in spite of the pandemic. Facility rentals are a strong revenue source and we have deliberately pursued this in the past, year, past years and we anticipate they will increase again this coming year. This past year, we have been able to implement new ways of giving through text-to-text, e-transfer, PayPal, and Canada Helps are all options in use. And we will continue to offer these options. Regardless of the way it comes in, we project our overall revenue will increase to $646,000. Next, let's take a quick overview of our main expense areas. Overall, we are running a pretty tight organization. You'll note we have increased budget amounts in most line items compared to last year's rainy day budget, assuming that this will be a more normal, normal year in, in uh, our, our season. You'll see these first two lines are operations and facilities. This includes expenditures for our equipment leases, heat and hydro utilities, building maintenance and repairs, and insurance. These costs change, change very little through times like this, and in fact some, like insurance, uh, are expected to actually increase. We have reflected a decrease in our heating utilities, a happy result of our furnace replacement project that's happening this August. We'll talk a bit more about that in, in our capital section. The next and most significant line is our personnel. This line includes all wages and benefits for Lambrick staff, and this number includes a 2% cost of living increase for staff, the first in two years, and some newly allocated wages for facility support. Additionally, this year, the board has committed to convene a committee to conduct a salary and job profile review, as the last one occurred back in 2012. Next is our missions budget. Although there is just one number in the overall budget, this chart that you see on the screen gives a greater sense of how the missions budget is broken down, supporting numerous individual missionaries as well as local and international partnerships, such as Food for the Hungry, Mustard Seed, and Camp Imidine. 
Our support for those organizations and individuals was not reduced last year and continues in this coming budget. This current year's mission budget was decreased in the areas that usually funded travel and mission trips. However, going forward, we've reinstated uh, an amount in, in the proposed budget in the hope that travel will again be possible for this purpose. Visions Ministry is our national church network. We are thankful for their partnership and support and are glad to contribute back to all they do for churches like ours and, and many new gospel-centered initiatives across the country. It's worth knowing that the bulk of these funds go to supporting church planting across Canada. Partners generally give a percentage of revenue, and we are increasing our contribution this year to $8,000 to be more in line with, with the standard partnership amounts. The area of professional services is primarily for the costs of the organization's annual audit in the fall and includes a contingency for technical support, legal advice, and or consultants that we may use throughout the year. Sunday ministry. We're so thankful to be looking forward to this again. The most notable piece of this covers another year with Daniel McDougall's contribution alongside Scott as a teaching associate, preaching 12 times over the course of the year. We're hugely thankful for Daniel's teaching ministry and his partnership with our pastoral team over the past two years. Elders discretionary. Largely this line exists to facilitate elders' strategic planning and provide for leadership support throughout the year. Each of the ministry areas, worship arts, children's ministry, and youth ministry, were given extremely modest budgets last year, and we have increased those again in anticipation of more in-person activities uh, together. Lastly, Lambrick's budget, our community life budget, includes all of our con congregationally-led ministries and events, including an increased provision for the vital work of our family care team. And last but not least, WiseWays has proposed a budget this year based, as I mentioned earlier, on operating four full classrooms, which will enable payment of all operating costs noted here as facility use commitments and results in a slight surplus. WiseWays Director Lisa Thompson develops the budget with support of WiseWays Council and is accountable to the Finance Committee and Board. We've been thankful for the Council and the tireless efforts of Lisa and her staff in managing, managing the center through all the protocols and requirements, which has, re, which has resulted in a happy, healthy environment for our kids. Wiseways is not only a financially viable center, but continues to provide much needed childcare services and is also a powerful ministry and resource to families in our neighborhood. Now let's move on and take a look at capital projects and the facility. As you may recall, thanks to government funding, our last fiscal year ended with a surplus. This has enabled us to plan for some much needed capital work that staff will oversee in the coming months. This includes replacement of four oil furnaces with natural gas, much, much more efficient and much more environmentally friendly. Replacement of two aging hot water tanks and heat pump unit. An addition of a heat pump to provide cooling into the cafe area. A few smaller projects such as fence, a fence for Wiseways Cottage and replacement of exterior stairs. And audio equipment to facilitate the live streaming of Sunday services going forward. As mentioned earlier, one of our priorities this coming year is our facility and we are also planning to undertake a facilities assessment and develop a 10-year capital plan. The facility is a blessing, and we are committed to ensuring its care. Thank you very much. So thank you again for taking the time to listen, to follow along with us. We hope this video has helped you understand how we've prioritized and planned for the coming year. As you think of us, please pray for us for wisdom and faith to guide us in the midst of shifting times. And let us pray together for God's continued grace in our shared life of a, as a church and our everyday mission in the world. These times have been challenging, but we have hope in a Savior who oversees all, who walks with us through every challenge and binds us together as his church. We want to re reiterate our commitment to ensure a fiscally responsible and viable ministry in this season as in every season. 
Thank you for partnering with us through your continued financial giving. And may God be glorified in how we give and how we serve together in this coming year. If you have any questions about the budget itself or the process that has shaped it, the finance team, board, and staff are glad to engage with you. It would be very helpful if you could send your questions ahead of the SGM so that we may prepare. We hope this video has answered many of those questions already. Please don't forget to sign up for the special general meeting on Monday, June 28th, 7 p.m., and to discuss uh, and we hope pass this budget for the coming fiscal year. Everyone who cares about the life of Lambrick is welcome to come, but voting will be limited to those who've committed to Lambrick through membership. Thank you again for your continued faithfulness.